Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're talking about the conditions in which authoritarian states emerged, impact of war. Now, just again, another refresher. Conditions in this sense is referring to what was happening around the country that made an environment for the Nazi party to grow. Now, this video is specifically going to be focusing on the impact of war. So, essentially, how the war damaged the country on an economic, physical, social, and political level. As you heard in previous lectures, there's a lot of lasting impacts from this, such as the Spartacus uprising, um, <clears throat> the Great Depression, the Ruhr crisis, uh, and many other things. So in this lecture, we're really going to focus on and really punch some key points to elaborate more from our previous World War I lecture and uh, really dive in and tailor it to Germany. So... The examples we're going to be going over today is World War I, the Treaty of Versailles, and the Weimar Republic. So, World War I. Now, as we remember from our lecture uh, with World War I, we know that Germany was um, one of the, the combatants, right? It's Germany essentially against everyone else. And um, one of the things that I really want to highlight is, uh, on the, as you can see here, your typical German soldier or, or high-ranking German soldiers had very similar uniforms like this. That, that You see that little pike on the top of his head? That is called the uh, Pestad. Uh, that is iconic for Germany. You're going to see that in a lot of propaganda photos. You're going to see that in uh, some World War II photos. You're going to see that uh, kind of across the board. So I want to really take a moment here to realize and to point out that whenever you see anything talking about Germany or you see a picture and a guy has that spike... That is a specific reference to World War I and, more specifically, Germany. Now, when we look at Germany, let's revisit World War I. When we look at Germany, as we can see here, they are pinched in between France and Russia. And they're fighting against France, Great Britain, Russia, uh, Italy, halfway through the war, if you remember, uh, Serbia, Romania, Greece. Uh, they're, they're kind of pinched between two sides. But what I want to highlight here is, if you notice... Most of the fighting, especially for, for France, is all right here, all right here, and against Russia is all here. One of the biggest impacts of World War I was the fact that a majority of the war was not fought on German land. That most of it was fought in France or in Russia. We only see a little bit up here. Because right here, you see that little white line? That is the German country at this point. So very little of this war was actually fought on German land. And so because of this, Germany was or had the ability to be economically ready after the war. They, they didn't have to worry about too much damage to their country. But as we will see, because most of the war was fought uh, outside of <clears throat> Germany, France, more specifically France, and Russia are going to use these sticking points to Germany and saying, hey, because most of our, our land was destroyed, because our farmland was destroyed right over here and over here, you need to pay us back for this. And uh, because of a lot of the, the warfare that was being fought, Germany had this interesting dynamic where, you know, they would commit war crimes, right? They would use gas and... and were bombing civilian targets and then cry whenever war crimes were done unto them right i mean neither side should be committing war crimes let me just say that right here now but because of the fact that the war was fought else not on german land, soil and the fact that they were committing so many war crimes or in some cases like gas the first to use it um a lot of the world saw germany as the enemy and so they wanted to not the enemy but like the aggressor, the main bad guy. And so they wanted to punish Germany. And so because of that, although Germany economically, in terms of how much land was destroyed, they're pretty good to go. They're, they're set. They're like, we're, we're going to be good, guys. But it's because of that that immediately following the war, the rest of the world wanted Germany to suffer. And a lot of that suffering comes from the Treaty of Versailles. Now, the things I want to highlight in the Treaty of Versailles are two things. One is what you saw in your reading, 
and two, something to really focus in. Now, the, the one I want you to focus in on is Article 231. Article 231 of the Treaty of Versailles states that the Allied and Associate Governments affirm that Germany accepts responsibility of Germany and her allies for causing all loss and damages to which the Allied and Associate Governments and their nations uh, have been subjected to as a consequence of the war imposed upon them by the aggressor of Germany and her allies. Essentially, Article 231 says, all right, Germany, because the land, most of the war wasn't fought in your country, because although Austria and Hungary were fighting the war and the Ottoman Empire were uh, fighting the war, you are going to be the person to take all blame. We're going to force you to take as much of the blame as possible, specifically right here affirms that Germany accepts the responsibility of Germany and her allies. So in the entire world wants to laser focus and say, Germany, you're the reason why. And so because of this, the other components of the Treaty of Versailles show just how angry the world was with Germany because of how much they were kind of okay after the war. So as we mentioned in the previous lecture on the economics, they lose all their territory in, in, in Europe, cutting off 4 million people. They lose all their overseas markets. Their army is severely cut down to 100,000. That is an incredibly small army. Just in general, that is an incredibly small army. Then they are obliged to pay the heavy reparations, right? The 200 and, uh, sorry, the 132 gold uh, mark, billion gold marks that they had to pay. And Germany had to accept the war guilt clause declaring responsibility for starting the war. That last bullet point here, Germany had to, to accept the war guilt clause. That is Article 231. So when we really sit back and look at it, the impact of, of the fact that Germany didn't suffer physically a lot of damage, the rest of the world needed to make sure economically you're going to suffer. Economically, you're going to suffer. Socially, you're going to suffer. You're going to be humiliated by the loss. And what makes this even worse is the fact that, as we've learned, as we talked about, the German people had no idea that they lost the war. They found out in the newspaper when everyone else found out. The German government, at the time, lied to the people and did not tell them that they were losing the war. Did not tell them that there was no possible chance of them winning this war. And so because of that, it, 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 it's just imagine yourself waking up tomorrow morning and finding out like, oh, Texas now belongs back with Mexico. I am now a Mexican citizen. I am now, uh, I need to revoke all my citizenship. Or the other way around. Let's say you wake up tomorrow and say, all right, the entire state of Nuevo León, you guys are now part of the U.S. territory. You need your U.S. citizenship. Otherwise, you will be deported from the country. It's, it's such a massive shift in, in the entire population and devastating, right? It's, it's this idea that we fought hard. We spent money. We rationed. We starved ourselves to make sure our troops had enough food and war material only for us to be destroyed. And, and this is where we get that that huge um, blame, as we saw with the white emigres in General Lindendorf, right? That the fact that <clears throat> Germany was stabbed in the back or, or that the Jews of the country are the reason why we lost the war. It was a, a massive undermining and humiliation, both uh, in the world stage, but also at home and personally to see that, oh, wow, we're not going to be beaten and pushed down as much as possible. This is further emphasized with the new government that takes place, because the new government is the one who signed the treaty, not the old government. This new government called the Weimar Republic, as you can see here. And this country, this, this new government, is now having to, as you can literally see right here, fighting for their right just to exist immediately after the war that as we saw with the spartacus uprising as we see with the the cap pushed as we see with lots of other little revolutions and uprisings 
this new government has to struggle with the fact that the previous king of Germany abdicated. He left. He ran away. He dipped. And now the German people are made to clean up the mess, deal with suddenly, wait a minute, we lost the war. We're losing half of our army. We have to pay a bunch of money. We are losing territory with the Ruhr crisis. Our king is no longer here. What is going on? What is happening? And so in this dismay, in this this transition, we start to see why economically Germany was off, was just not going to make it. We see why socially there were so many divisions between the right and the left and the racism that comes with the elder, the protocols of the elder of Zion that gets reintroduced into Germany, right? That new wave of anti-Semitism. It's, it's a massive, massive kicking while Germany is already down from having to surrender from the war. And so when we really think about the war, when we really think about the way this is all set up, World War I follows with humiliation, then economic crisis, then social division, and then a brand new government that has to deal with multiple uprisings. And as you're going to see in the next video or in another video with the weakness of political systems, was a terrible government. They had a lot of problems. They had a lot of issues that unfortunately were very easy to manipulate, were very easy to control and break thus really creating a perfect environment for someone anyone to take over and you know in our case the nazi party